While the Lenape men had very important jobs to do, from hunting, to fishing, to making tools, to protecting the tribe, Lenape women and children also had really important tasks as well, from farming, to foraging, to making all of the different objects that they would use in their everyday lives. And although they had abundant natural resources available to them to create these objects, they were still very creative and resourceful when it came to using these materials. And they would put every little bit of a plant that they foraged or an animal that they hunted to good use and let nothing go to waste, as was the way with many Native American tribes. They were actually the original reduce, reuse recyclers. And we could learn a lot from the way that they used all different materials, from wood to stone to bone, feather, leather, and shells. So come with me and let's explore some of these objects that the Lenape women, elders, and children would create. We've learned up until this point in our Lenape virtual lesson, some of the most important jobs of the women and the children in Lenape society, and they were foraging and farming. But how would they harvest all of those fruits and nuts and berries and mushrooms? Where would they put them? They'd need some sort of container or vessel. They couldn't just go out to the store and buy one, so they had to make them all themselves. And that's where all of these baskets and containers come into play. So Lenape women and children would have to harvest all of the materials that would go into making different shapes and sizes of containers. They would also be used for storage. Some baskets were actually used to hold other basket materials, like pine needles. They would have to gather long shoots or roots and let them dry and preserve in the longhouse before they could re-soak them and use them. So they could use pine needles, they could use willow shoots, they could use pretty much anything as long as it passed the wrist test, which is if you bend it over your wrist and it doesn't snap, then dry it and it'll be able to be used when it is re-soaked. They also could have used cordage to make baskets, but they would have had to have made the cordage first. And it's actually a natural rope made from any manner of usable plant fibers. So some examples of plant fibers that could be used would be tall leaves from cattail plants. They could have used corn husks to do this reverse wrap. They also could have used long grasses or even certain inner barks from trees. This one's from a cedar tree. In addition to all of these amazing baskets that the Lenape women and children were creating, they were also making really important clay vessels. And clay pots were really important because they had a watertight seal. So it would make it possible for them to bring water to their settlement, and it also would make it possible for them to cook their meals. They were making lots of stews and mashes, and they could put the clay pot right over an open flame. And the coolest part of it is that clay pottery is some of the only archeological evidence that remains from early Lenape settlements here on Staten Island. Here's a question for you. Where do you think the Lenape got their clothing from? And what kind of clothes did they wear anyway? Well, the answer is that they wore very simple clothing, especially in the warmer months. Men wouldn't wear more than a breech cloth, and women wouldn't really wear more than just a dress. In the colder months, they would wear leggings, they would wear moccasins, and they might even wear a fur coat. And almost all of those materials came from what you're looking at right here. And this is the skin of an animal that came in from the hunt. They may decide to leave the fur on, like you see here on this deer, and that would help to insulate it a little bit more. Or they might decide to scrape it all off and soften it with a process called brain tanning. And this is what you may know as leather or suede today. Some of the really fun items that the Lenape women and children might be creating at home were for musical purposes. So certain things that they were farming, like gourds or pumpkins, might be able to be dried and preserved and have the outside be hard while the inside seeds get hard as well, but nothing rots. And then they become a shaker. They also made turtle shell rattles. And this would have taken way more materials and a lot more time to craft. But as you can see, it would be made from the complete entire shell of a turtle. It would be wrapped in buckskin or rawhide. It would be tied with deer sinew 
it would be filled with stones or hard seeds. And then it would have a handle made out of a branch wrapped in some leather as well so that you could hold it and use it as a shaker. Some more of the really interesting things that had to do with the Lenape home craft were called paint pots. And you can still find these on the shores of Staten Island, depending on where you're walking, mostly on the South shore. And what would look like just a stone as you're walking along, if you cracked it open, you would see evidence of what was a really fine grained pigment that the Lenape women would extract from inside the stone, add to some sort of animal fat and create a paint. That paint would be used to paint their faces as well as different Lenape clothing garments and baskets. This is an example of a really large paint pot that used to have pigment inside of it. If you were to guess, what would you say this material is? And where do you think it came from? It's dry, it's brittle, it makes a loud scratching noise. It's definitely a plant material. And we've actually already learned about the plant that these husks come from quite a few times during this virtual lesson. You guessed it, they come from the corn plant. And the husks are the outer leaves that protect the ears of corn as they're growing from insects or any other animals that might try to eat them. So not only did the corn provide lots of sustenance and nutrition for the Lenape people, but also different materials that they could use for different home crafts. Like I mentioned earlier, the Lenape women would use corn husks to make natural ropes or cordage, and the kids would actually do something even more exciting with them. One of the main reasons that the Lenape women would save the corn husks from the corn harvest was so that the young girls could craft what you see right here. And this is called a corn husk doll. And as you can see, they'd make a little figurine of a doll or a woman that was crafted from the corn husks. And legend said, that the corn husk doll was actually the spirit of corn from the Three Sisters companion plant. Young girls and boys in Lenape society did not go to formalized school like you do today, so they had to learn all of the skills that they would need as adults when they were kids by paying attention and following their parents and their elders around as they took care of their, their daily tasks. So you could see how a young girl crafting a small corn husk doll and using her fine motor skills would be practicing the skills necessary used in sewing clothing together, making grass mats, and doing fine beadwork. So if school for the young Lenape girls looked like making corn husk dolls to prepare them for sewing clothing and making grass mats and weaving baskets when they were older, how do you think young Lenape boys would practice to become the hunters and protectors of the tribe that they were gonna be when they were older. Well, there was a really fun game and something simple that you can even do at home. And that was called Spear the Deer. So even when they were playing games, they were honing their skills for the future. Spear the Deer is a very simple game. It starts with a wooden branch, connecting rope to a little hoop. And it goes like this. And time after time, the boys would try to get the stick through the hoop or spear the deer. And we could see pretty easily how this is helping young boys to practice their aim and their target. Now that you've learned quite a bit about some of the most important everyday items that the Lenape women and children were crafting at home, maybe you can reflect a little bit on the everyday items in your very own life that help to make your life exciting and easier. Are there any similarities? Are any of your items made from natural materials like wood or bone or leather? How many of your everyday items are crafted from synthetic materials? If we think back to 500 or 1000 years ago, we might be able to see how over time so many things have changed. But I bet if you look at some of the objects in your house, you'll see how a lot of things have actually stayed the same.